Selling food is a huge business. It's, it's wonderful. And behind every ad campaign is a food stylist. We use margarine most of the time because of the color. These are the people who make food look irresistible in the advertising. So these drinks look better than real life. At the food stylist convention in Minneapolis, we learned what it takes to make cereal look perfect. Do you want to come over some of the flakes? That's hair tonic they're using instead of milk, which might wilt the cereal. My recipe for fake ice cream. This isn't ice cream, it's Crisco shortening. And they can light it, they can try big scoops, little scoops, we can play around with this all day long. Food styling makes all the ads look great, and they can be very seductive. So rich, so creamy. The food industry spends $34 billion a year to market their products. One strawberry blasted honeycomb! And these particular ads, who do you think they are designed for? I'm so hungry. Must have my Pringles no way. It is estimated that the food industry spent more than $12 billion last year promoting food they want children to eat. It is twice what they spent 10 years ago. Kids are a very dynamic audience. Paul Kernett is an advertising executive who specializes in marketing to children. Why is so much time and money spent advertising to children? Kids are, in many ways, unsocialized. They are... Uh, fresh-eyed, they are open to new ideas. Kids are big business. There's no question about that. Most of the food that is advertised to children is processed food, and it is exactly what children are buying. Oh, yummy! Children spend more of their own money on food than anything else, more than on CDs or movies or clothes or toys, and the public health implications of children's diets are enormous. The problem is, is that most of the foods that are marketed to children are unhealthy foods. And the children are exposed to so many messages about junk food that the cultural norm around food has changed so that children think that they should be getting candy and cookies and chips and soda and these other junky foods all the time. The average American child sees 10,000 food advertisements a year on television alone. Most of those advertisements are for fast food, sugar-coated cereals, soft drinks and candy, and other foods dense in fat and calories. These are your members. Are you happy to hear those statistics? Well, I think that companies are, are trying to market their products responsibly. And if you look at some of the categories that are there, it's not, it's not all those foods that are available all the time and advertised on television. But they're I think not advertising so, fruits and vegetables on television. Well, they're advertising other options for cereal on television and, and other really snack sweet. products as well. They're baby food desserts. Maybe that's where it starts. And then when kids are two years old, they gain the strength to turn on the television set and they see the, the constant stream of commercials. Then they go to school. And even in schools, there are encouragements to eat junk food. When you are putting together an advertising campaign, do you care whether the product is healthy or not? I care that the product has a positive role in a child's life. It is not my fundamental responsibility to be sure that that product in and of itself fulfills a complete diet. Have you played a role in making less healthy products appealing to children, thereby increasing their desire for those products? I've played a role in making all kinds of products appealing to kids. And the, the issue of less healthy is a judgment call that you can make. But you know what's less healthy. You know where asparagus and soda pop line up. You are absolutely correct that I am not going to get the same return on investment for a client in advertising asparagus and spinach to a kid as advertising some of the so-called less healthy products to kids. Guilty as charged. Don't you know nothing? Have you noticed how most food is marketed to kids, directly to kids? Put dabble your applesauce and turn it green. They put cartoon characters all over the package, including characters from Disney, the parent company of ABC News. Candy for breakfast? They turn candy into breakfast cereal. Ooh, snack on time. They encourage kids to eat junk food in school. 
And they tell kids they can win money if they buy certain foods. Find the one Oreo that turns your milk blue, and you could win a million bucks. They probably won't get a lot of money. But if children eat them, they will get a lot of calories. And if you are the parent of a small child, we can almost guarantee that they're asking you to buy some of this. That's what the industry wants kids to do. Parents that I talk to who have young children tell me that the last thing in the world they want to argue with their kids about is food. And the marketers know that. And so they deliberately target the advertising to generate what they call a nag factor. My kids, for example, pestered me endlessly to buy Lucky Charms cereal, which was the one that we had the most fights over when they were young. Um, and every now and then I'd let them get it. It was too much trouble arguing with them. And here is something ironic. The people who make the ads often blame parents for not protecting children from the effects of the advertising that they've created. More often than not, children who nag their parents to buy them uh, any kind of product are children and parents in whom the relationship is fundamentally flawed. Sounds a little bit like you're criticizing the parents for not doing a good enough job. I am. I think that there is a parental abdication of responsibility and limits in terms of what is appropriate for their kids. If companies think that parents should be making decisions about their children's food, then they should market child-oriented food products to parents. But they don't. They're bypassing the parents, and they're talking directly to our kids and trying to get our kids to nag us to buy their unhealthy products. Snack! Children's diets are clearly influenced by all this advertising. Let's eat! There is so much research to show that what you show children on TV affects their intake, uh, and the amount of, of children's TV that's dominated by food, and the total amount of our TV budget that's dominated by food commercials is enormous. All the marketing to children is feeding an epidemic of childhood obesity. 15% of all children between 6 and 19 are overweight or obese, and that is nearly 9 million children. Many children already show signs of the serious diseases that result from being overweight. Our children eat so badly nowadays that a quarter of elementary school-aged children already have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or some other risk factor for heart disease. These are little kids, and they already are on their way to a heart attack. Very young children are now showing signs of type 2 diabetes, a terrible disease that was never seen in such young children before. The diet of many American children may already be condemning them to a lifetime of illness. Why are we allowing companies to market junk foods to young children? It's like having door-to-door -door salespeople knock on the door and say, ma'am, I'd like to talk to your young child alone, if you don't mind, and then encourage the kid to eat junk food. No parent would ever allow that. Is there any way to stop this? When we come back.